Hi folks, in this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to set up the kitchen and electrical on your Oz RV LX. First of all, when setting up the kitchen, remove the dust cover for the bayonet connection for the gas hose. Being a bayonet connection, you twist it and then remove the cover. Now I can open up my cabinet and here you'll find the electrical panel and the kitchen. To release the kitchen, there are two pad bolt fittings, one on either side, and you need to pull them back. And then if you turn them 90 degrees, a pin will sit on a small lip and hold those pad bolts out of the way. That makes it easy to grab this top handle. Always make sure you grab this top one because it's connected to the chassis of the kitchen and it is the strongest point. Don't pull the bottom one, that is for the slide out tray. Now and pull the kitchen out. Bring it all the way out until it stops firm. Now beneath the kitchen is a set of drop down legs. So from here, there's a small sliding spring loaded pad bolt with a button on the front of the chassis. If I press that in, that'll release the legs and there's two adjusting screws, one either side. So I can drop them down, tighten up the wing nuts and my support legs down. That'll assist if I'm using heavier pots and pans on the kitchen, it'll support the weight. Now I can open up the cover, which has a windshield connected. To do that, I lift these panels out, swing them out, and either side of the stove are a couple of little holes to locate the dowel, which is there to allow you to locate these dowels for your wing panels. You'll notice these foam covers underneath the griddle. They're there to protect the burners during travel and keep them in place. So before you cook, you remove them. Then once everything's cooled down and you're ready to pack up and leave, place them back on. Just here, we have a dish rack, which you simply lift up into place. That's for drying all your cups, plates, that sort of thing, and your utensils. On the left here, we have our tap. Raise that up, and the tap has a valve fitting that allows you to turn the water on and off and adjust the temperature through the tap fitting. And in the center here, we have our LED light so you can see what you're doing when you're cooking. Tucked up in the back of the kitchen here is a small electrical lead for the light on the kitchen. Pull that out and plug it into its small port just there. Your gas hose is connected up through the hole underneath the sink. So pull the hose out through that port there and plug it into the bayonet connection. Line it up, push it in and twist it to the right and it's locked in. Our first step when packing up the kitchen is turn the gas bottle off and release the gas through the cooktop. Then disconnect the bayonet by pushing it in and turning to the left. Now you can stow that up underneath the sink and return the dust cover to its position. Before you go any further, disconnect the lead for the light and slide it back into its little spot at the back of the kitchen. Make sure you get it slid all the way back in, pop it into the little rubber grommet, and now you're ready to pack up the rest. We continue on packing up, which is basically the reverse procedure of setting up. Move our tap down out of the way, then we can close up our dish rack, fold our light down out of the way. Now we can pack up the stove top. Remember, let everything cool down before you replace these polystyrene covers. Fold our wing panels in and close it up. When packing up the legs, undo both the wing nuts and retract the legs fully and evenly back into their slot then do the wing nuts up again. Then you can fold it up, put it in place and 
push the spring-loaded pad bolt back into connect with the hole in the bottom of the leg. Before we slide the kitchen back into place, double check that all your hoses are tucked up and put away, that your electrical connections are disconnected, and these two pad bolts are still in the retracted position so they don't strike the edge of the camper as we push the kitchen away. So we're all set to go and we can simply slide the kitchen back into place. Now it's in place, we can release these pad bolts into their positions. Very important to do that before you travel so the kitchen doesn't try and slide and damage the door. The majority of the electrical controls are here right beside the kitchen at the main panel. Easy to access and it consists of the basics such as your battery condition, volts and amps and the amp gauge will tell you how many amps you are using. It won't tell you how many amps are going back into the system from solar panels or from charging with the car or when you're charging from mains power. Below that are some circuit breakers. They're a resettable breaker so should a circuit become overloaded, the button will pop out and to reset it is simple as pushing the button back in. Each of the switches for the circuits is a push tight switch. Main power switch, that switches your system on and activates all the other circuits. The water tank levels, that's your front and your rear tank. Easy to read and it'll tell you how much water you got left. And just here we have our 12 volt outlet plus our USB outlet so we can charge tablets and phones. And below that, two small 12 volt outlets for things like the kitchen light. The only other main thing that you need to know about is there is a mega fuse in beside the batteries inside the camper. That covers the 12 volt and the kitchen operation. Now we can close that up and talk about the 240 volt inlet and outlet. Just beside the kitchen is a 240 volt outlet, which operates when you are connected to mains power on the other side of the camper. To connect up your mains power, simply connect it to this inlet on the side of the camper. And inside, underneath the seat, you'll find the RCD safety devices for your mains. And beside the kitchen, you've got a power outlet. Before you turn on your Truma hot water system, you need to come out to the side of the camper and remove this cover. If you're doing it for the first time, you also need to purge the water through the hot water system and make sure there's no air in the lines. To remove the cover, you need to place your thumbs on the center here, apply pressure with your thumbs and pull the cover from the top to release it. That gets our cover off. Now you can go inside and switch on the system. Make sure it's turned on at the main board. Then it's simply a rocker switch. Up for 60 degrees, down for 70 degrees. When you use it for the first time, there is a lot of air in the gas line, which will need to be purged out. So often it's a good idea to run the kitchen first, purge as much air out as you possibly can that way, and then flick your hot water system on. It may take a number of times for all that air to expel, but it will eventually light and give you lots of hot water. When you're done, you need to pack it up and return this cover to position, which is simply place it on bottom first, push it in, give it a tap and make sure it's secure. And that folks covers the kitchen and electrical setup on your Oz RV LX. Remember to head across to our YouTube channel and check out our other instructional videos and go to our website and download a copy of our owner manual. These are our commitment to you to ensure you get the very best out of any Oz RV product for many years to come.